Welcome to the gazebo. We have an exciting AMA for you guys today. We got 14 of the GameStop launch creators. A um, couple couldn't make it, but but we still got a few here. So I hope you guys are excited. We're going to be talking all about Marketplace, all about get some education out there on you guys, talk about the future of NFTs, what we're looking forward to, and just hype things up. Oh, and if you stick around to the end, we got a few giveaways too. So be sure to be here for that. Um, but without further ado, let me get to the introductions here. So first we got uh, Ordinary Adam joining us. Ordinary Adam, thank you for, for being here. And thanks for helping organize this too, by the way. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Um, I've kind of been like lurking in uh, your, your your gazebo for a long time, even before it was called the gazebo. And uh, I kind of shit post here a lot, so <laughs> thanks for having me and uh, letting me help organize. I love it. I love it. Uh, next we got coming in is Power to the Apes too, as well. Power, thanks for joining us too, and welcome. Yeah, absolutely, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm uh, new here, new to this channel, but certainly gonna follow uh, and uh, watch this uh, a little bit more uh, for the next time. So happy to be here, man. You. Thank you for inviting me. No problem. I'm excited. We also got uh, Bomb Atomics joining us too. Bomb, welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Very excited. Also new to this channel. Glad to participate. Well, welcome again. Next, we got Rum Runners as well joining us. Rum, welcome. Hey, what's up, everybody? And uh, I'm new here too. I don't know what the hell's going on, but let's have some fun. <laughs> we'll find out. We're just winging this, so. <laughs> Uh, Abanti joining us too with the TV show on the GameStop Marketplace. Welcome, Abanti. It's actually Abante, but oh, okay. pretty close. I knew I was wrong. <laughs> on that. I knew it. <laughs> but yes, Abante Productions. I'm Lynn Mosqueda, and the other owner of Abante is here as well. Yep, I'm Danny Mason. We're beyond excited to be here. Uh, this is all new to us, but we're here to wreck shop and start a new evolution. So Hell very excited yeah. to be here. Thanks yes. for joining us. Next, we got uh, Storm109. Storm, thank you for joining us, too, and welcome to the gazebo. Hey, thank you, man. It's good to be here. Uh, I got no idea what I'm doing, either. It seems to be a, a common thread amongst us, so <laughs> let's just have some fun. I like it. <laughs> and unfortunately, the hard drive couldn't make it. He might pop in in, in a bit. We'll see, but he was uh, he was on the list, so we'll see what happens there. And then also welcoming Jem. Jem, thank you for joining us. Hey, everybody. Hi. Thank you for having me here. It's great. No problem. And we also have Bumbleberry coming in. Bumbleberry, welcome to the gazebo. Hi. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. No problem. As well as uh, Pertinent Pen. He is here now. Pertinent, welcome. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm stumbling across your Twitch and Discord channel now, but it's, it's a pleasure. Thank you nice. so much. Good afternoon to you from across the ocean. And uh, I don't think Quarry Studios couldn't make it too, but again, they might pop right in, so they're also part of this. Uh, L Alien, you're here. Welcome. Hey, it's Alien. <laughs> Hi. Oh. Um, what was it? Sorry, what was it? L Alien? Alien. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, okay. I wonder Everyone how many people pronounce Alien. that wrong. Yeah. <laughs> like well, yeah. Thank you for having me. Uh, uh, it's. Uh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> That's thank all right. We'll, we'll say a lot soon. And miso soup again. Welcome to the gazebo. Thanks for joining us. 
Hello. Hello, hello. And last but not least, uh, Mythonite. Is Mythonite here? I don't think he's here with us. No, he's not. But Mythonite might join us later as well, too. So we're we're missing three, but that's all right. We have a good show for everyone. And without further ado, let's just jump right into things and head into the questions so we can start talking about stuff. So first question we are going to do is... What are your thoughts? This is this is a good one to start with. So what are your thoughts on the current negative sentiment towards NFTs and how can that ca- be countered and what do you think is required for mass adoption? Um, I know pertinent Pert- you kind of wanted to answer this one and Leilani, you can expand thereafter. Or yeah, that's a, ideas. An, yeah, that's a fantastic question. Um, there are quite a few um, negative highlights that are being uh, made against nfts but uh, i think the greatest cause of concern for nfts well through my interaction with uh, different gaming communities subreddits subreddits, etc etc is the main trust of um who can we trust in regards to who are owning these nfts creating these nfts Uh, uh, the context in which i speak from are mainly in the in the gaming sphere so can we, or as players or as consumer bases of different gaming, different games, actually trust the developers that are creating these games? And can they be trusted with NFT technology in a sense that um, the players players would be respected in the sense that it wouldn't be cash grabs, money grabs? Because at the moment, players don't seem to have great trust with um, different developers. And I think a studio that highlights this is Team17. Um, there recently was a studio that tried to integrate NFT technology with, I would say, a fairly popular game, which is Worms. I'm not sure if oh. many people are aware of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they tried to implement NFT technology. But that received um, heavy backlash from the community. Um, they didn't like it. Like, that could be for main re- uh, many reasons. I the prob- The most probable reason is because whenever the normal individual thinks of NFT, they think of uh, uh, a monkey going for like $700,000. <laughs> yeah. to, to be honest with you, that isn't really, I mean, that is the face of NFTs at the moment. You mention NFT to anybody walking down the street. If they, ha- if they have any idea of what it is, the first thing that they'd probably think of is one of those old ape yacht clubs that are yeah. going for like $500,000, $600,000, and they just think that this is some really hyperinflated market and this isn't suitable for the average individual so and and i think this is uh, another point that's being highlighted by those who like to spread fad against um nft technology because it's a disruptive technology and obviously there are going to be a lot of players who would be essentially removed from business uh, a lot of middlemen being cut through this uh, thing so there is obviously a um, an unfortunate train of negative sent- uh, sentiment that's actually pushing uh, different consumers, gamers, whatnot. But I think um, uh, there was a great infographic that was actually made by uh, Gods of Unchained that actually highlighted how much uh, studios actually profited off their uh, in-game items, etc. Well, the stats was actually, so we have a stat for 2019. Mm. It said players spent $87 billion on in-game items but received zero dollars and it all went to the giant game companies and i i think a company that a lot of us may relate to if we're avid fans of star wars or sports game would be ea um ea is a company that's known for being uh to be quite frank money grabbing demons um (laughs) they're very (laughs) Sorry, I've got a little bit of a personal grudge against the year no, as well. I agree with you. <laughs> um, if you're a fan of Star Wars, anyway, I think they've handled that series absolutely dreadfully, um, especially with the sort of abuse of DLC content that they've added, um, in-game items, uh, especially with loot boxes. I'm pretty sure uh, that many of us have had <laughs> daunting experiences with loot boxes. Yes. They're responsible for that. Um, mm. They've they invented that, in fact. And uh, I think the main concern is when people think of a combination of seven hundred thousand dollar uh, monkey j- pictures and EA and other gaming studios, they think this is a recipe for disaster. Um, this isn't going to go well for 
the average gamer or whatnot. It's going to be filled with pay um, pay to win content. I think that's the sort of image they have of how these different studios would um, actually implement this technology in a pay to win fashion, and and it wouldn't really and it would essentially be in such a way in such a model where fun would be taken out of gaming. Yeah, and I yeah. think that's probably the main cause for concern i think with nft stepping into the world of gaming is just the level of trust between the players and yeah, the actual I, agree. I think that's i think that's kind of the wall that that that's sort of up right now and i mean does anyone have any ideas on sort of where we could go to to get mass adoption or or what like i'm like to me i'm thinking the once immutable releases and and sort of gets used more widely the the fact that that you're cutting out all the gas fees and and people are concerned about carbon neutrality and stuff like that too that it's it's going to turn less into these seven hundred thousand dollar board apes and more into these one two dollar fifty cent skins and, and in-game items that you just can buy and sell with ease and i think that's that's sort of um where where we'll need to go to to break down these walls and, and sort of get to that mass adoption stage um does anyone else have anything else to say on that yeah so you know in the gaming space right now um, sentiment is largely controlled by influencers such as Twitch streamers. Um, and you know, when you have a Twitch streamer like XQC who has a hundred thousand plus viewers, even more subscribers, um, you know, if you, if you have people like that bad mouthing NFTs on a regular basis, um, you know, it's, it's going to have an effect in the larger, mm, you know, mindset call. around that. Yeah, I guess once we get the adoption from from the sort of the larger streamers too, and and it's it's really just going to take proving it out. And as these games are released and, and they prove that that it's it's you it's valuable for the players, I think I think that's when you'll really start to see that mass adoption happen. But um, let's move on to the next question because we are tight for time. So next one we got is on the subject of metaverse projects one of the most easily understood and interesting one and i don't know if you guys know about this but there's the lego metaverse that um lego's working on with unreal engine they don't have much information out but i think the kind of plan is to it's more based on augmented reality i think and it's sort of to tie the two worlds together and they are focusing sort of on kids but i see i see like nfts being used here where you would buy um a Lego set and you'd get like sort of the digital version of it too, where you could then play in real life or like through AR or online even. Um, so that's kind of one example of, of a potential metaverse that would use this, but do you guys know of any other similar projects or anything that would help sort of the average person understand the potential of the metaverse? So for us, um, we believe that the NFTs most definitely have endless possibilities. And there's a lot of examples inside the GameStop marketplace right now. As far as the metaverse, there is. Yeah, uh, CyberCrew, right? Has a collection of NFTs mm -hmm. that are uh, metaverse ready, characters and equipment. Yeah, so that's one way that it can be applied, but also the marketplace has other nfts that are going to disrupt major industries right there's also um oh uh what is it uh poppy art uh who has original designers of xbox controllers who also sells unique custom physical controllers as well oh. we also know that yeah. a lot of people um really love skate of the art right uh yeah. soda they brought together over 200 artists and created these beautiful nfts that give the holder the right to purchase a physical skateboard with the art on it. And awesomely enough, it also comes with a wall mounting system so you can display your skateboard. Right, and then that brings up, then there's us, Bonte Productions. And we, as of right now, the first and only to put a live action TV series out on the blockchain. Yeah. So our pilot episode can be bought right same way as the other NFTs with transparency of data ownership and accessibilities. It's like owning your VHS tapes, your DVDs, your Blu-rays, but in your wallet that you can stream on any device. Well, I think, and then also with that, I would also say this is most importantly, it's not just like the idea of a revolution. This is more of an evolution course. By um, buying these NFTs, we would say is the best way to tear down the industry that crushes the heart and souls of the creators, right? As yeah. an example, I mean, with <laughs> filming TVs, 
Current, struct, uh, current structure essentially requires uh, you to have agents, managers, uh, distributors, uh, studios, a streaming platform, and executives that you have to go through in order just to get your story to even be, be seen. Mm-hmm. So, and in this process yeah. for us as filmmakers, it's the original idea is then changed. It's manipulated to fit yeah. the opinions, the views, the ideas, the ideologies of what those individuals and those companies think that all of you, the viewers, want to see. And not only that, all of them receive all of the profits first and throw like pennies to nothing to the creator if the creator is lucky enough to get that. Oh yeah, definitely lucky in that part. And you have to just even it's like a trial by fire and stuff to yeah. get to that. And then like yeah. but with blockchain and like this marketplace, it allows really for the first time uh creators and fan relationship to blossom. And that's most importantly about it as being a filmmaker, ultimately you're a storyteller. Right. And then it allows that. And for the fans to help actually guide and contribute by working with us, the creators and the filmmakers. And this is how we feel we give the power back not only to the creator, right? The players for all the gamings and things that you guys have mentioned for the metaverse and like in purchase games and those things, the viewers for us filmmakers and a lot more, all while creating healthy competition. And we just become a big family. Yeah, yeah, that's a good it's a good point. And like the fact that I like the what you said about removing sort of that that layer of where your stuff sort of gets changed through the avenues that it that is being released through. So it really gets that that like creator to to fan relationship a lot closer. So huge potential there. And 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 same with same with the I think those soda boards are gonna be a good example of like a first edition um collector item that will have NFTs tied to it to sort of sort of prove out that that whole concept too so i mean a lot of exciting stuff happening and i mean this is just the beginning so we'll see where it goes yeah just the tip of the iceberg of the true (laughs) potential and it's gonna be hard for people within to understand that kind of transition of the entertainment and film industry into this new world but yeah yeah we're ready for the challenge yeah yeah it's gonna take trailblazers oh yeah yeah i'm I'm excited to see what happens Yeah, it's a good industry. And it's stuff definitely going to be a fun adventure. Yes. <laughs> okay, next question we got. Uh, I know some people are interested in just kind of learning about, because I know a lot of you are sort of inspired by sort of everything that's happened and, and hyped up about this marketplace. And I, I know personally I've been creatively inspired by all this. And uh, some people do want to know, um, I think, Adam, you might be able to answer this one, but how do you go, like, what are the basics of sort of minting, a creating and minting a 3D NFT and what is involved? Is it a big process or is it pretty straightforward? Have you done this at all? Like like an actual interactable 3D. I don't know if any of you guys have done that. Oh, well, my, my experience with uh, 3D interactive NFTs is pretty limited, actually. I kind of had to fumble my way through it because uh, I mostly just do pixel art. Um, mm-hmm. But I think just exporting it as a, as a I believe it's a GPL uh, file. And yeah, just GLTF drag and drop it. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. And you, mm-hmm. it's literally drag and drop. It's not that oh. hard to do. It's yeah, it's very simple. So if anybody's like scared off by you know minting on layer two, it's actually really really easy. If, if you know you're a three D artist or an artist in general, um, don't be scared away. It's not scary. It's it's pretty simple. So mm-hmm. so that's just is that your experience with the GameStop wallet and just dragging and dropping the GLTF file there? Yeah, I don't think I can like speak too heavily okay. on like the mechanics, but yeah. I, I can tell you it's it's very um, similar to like loop ring where it's mm-hmm. it's just like it's actually very streamlined. I, I can just put it to you that way. It's very easy to use. Okay, nice. Because I know I've tried it one time before, and I was trying to go through like pinata and all that stuff, and you had to do like a JavaScript file that that would render a scene of the GLTF file. So it's nice to see like that's what's going to take is things are going to be a lot more streamlined as as this develops. So. I'm excited to see that. So and then and then creating it too. It's just any 3D program. I know a lot of you you will use Blender probably, right? Is there any other programs that you utilize when you're making those 3D pieces? It's mostly just like a Blender and um, Magic Voxel. Um, okay. Those are the two that I use. Um, Blender's still a little scary to me. I'm pretty new to it. <laughs> it's yeah, got yeah. a lot of options, but uh, mo- mostly I, I play around in Magic Voxel. Is that more pixel art related? Yeah, it's like uh it's like a 3D pixel art. So oh, okay. if you're you're decent at pixel art, you 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 can just jump in pretty easily. Nice, nice magic box. Okay. Well, that was good. Um 
Okay, next, uh, so we do love the ideas of tying NFTs to other items, be it in-game or a physical object. Um, and now, what if you guys personally, what kind of concepts or future utility do you foresee in your NFTs? Anyone can answer this one if they want to, if you have any future plans uh, for use. Can I jump in on this one real quick? Yeah, go ahead, Storm. All right, so I really, you know, kind of going off of what Abante was talking about with uh, – with the media aspect of it, I've got uh, future plans. I've, I've made a few uh, animated videos with music in them. Um, I'm actually really interested to see what uh, NFTs can do for the music industry uh, because the music industry, as, it, as it's named, you know, is, is the industry. People are making money off of other people's art. Um, and I would really like to see creators being able to keep more of their own profits from things. I mean, I think that the NFTs, as far as uh, what they can bring to the table for multimedia production and and uh, distribution is is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, it brings up other issues such as like copyrights and stuff like that. But I, I think that there are ways to go about this and and come up to, you know, uh, positive conclusions for everybody involved, um, whether it be the, the retailer or, or not the retailer, but the uh, the buyer and the seller. Yeah. Um, already from, you know, just in terms of royalties on individual NFTs, uh, we're talking about way better than ASCAP or, or uh, BMI or anybody is going to pay out to you. Yeah, um, exactly. And, you know, it, it's cool to have uh, special edition releases that you could do. Uh, you know, you sell off 100 albums or something like that and then people can trade them around and and do what they want with them and the artist is still getting royalties on that and i think that that's gonna be applicable for uh all all various types of multimedia mm -hmm. um i i also think that it's it's new technology that a, a lot of people in traditional industries are kind of afraid of right now and being early in this case is is really important because we are actually creating this foundation uh, to build on. And GameStop Marketplace is kind of a way to streamline that to the regular people uh, without making it extremely difficult. I mean, when we first jumped into uh, minting NFTs, I mean, people were doing it on OpenSea. I didn't start until L2. And it, it was, you know, it was a learning curve. Uh, I had to figure it out and, you know, get, you know, three or four different wallets and, bounce coins around and transfer things and pray that the Coinbase gods were going to get my, my Ethereum there. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, was, it was a big hassle. Um, and I, I think what GameStop is kind of doing is, is building this bridge between NFTs and, and uh, traditional media types and, and gaming and art. And it's, it's a really important thing to be happening right at this moment. Yeah, I think you're um, right. And, and like the same point keeps coming up and again and again and again is it's all about cutting out the middleman and getting that that direct connection with with the communities that are involved with with whoever's work it may be. Having that having that strong relationship with with the community surrounding you is is really what what will help excel things forward and and you have too much there's too much when you have when you have a middleman or, or a production company sort of in between that. So uh, that's kind of a point that continues to come up and and it's exactly what we all see. Definitely. So let's move on. Um, next one. Th this is I know people. A lot of people will be interested. So uh, feel free, all of you, to to answer this or add to this. But I'm sure people want to know what the process looked like while you're per not not specifically after, because I know you can't maybe say anything about that. But but what did you do to like uh, to prepare for applying to the marketplace? Um, we'll ignore the what is involved after. And then um, again, also, were you were any of you professional artists before, or if not, well, how did you get into it? Um, but what was your what was your sort of preparation process for applying? I can um, chime in. If yeah, chime in. Else room. Alien, right. alien, you, alien, you can talk after. Yeah. Yeah. So we applied three times. We applied once when it first when we first heard about it, mm -hmm. um, and then we applied again a little bit later when we had a little more to show, and then the third time I decided that I'm going to harass them until we get on there. So we made a private page on our website explaining who we were in real life, you know, what our backgrounds are, what our what our vision is, 
think we didn't want to put up in public. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we applied again and then, you know, harassed them a little bit wherever I could find anybody that worked at GameStop. And that seemed <laughs> to do the trick. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's about creating more than just, just submitting some art. You gotta, you gotta kind of prove out that what you, what you have is something valuable. Yeah. The way I see it, and I've worked in corporate for a long time mm-hmm. that these are busy people. They got a lot on their plate. You know, once the floodgates opened on this, they probably got thousands and thousands of applications that when it's time for them to look for someone new, they're not meticulously reading every little detail. They want something that's going to catch their eye. They want some someone who's going to make their decision easy. So anything you could do on your end to make it easier for them by laying out your information real clearly, laying out your artwork very well, mm-hmm. and telling them who you are just makes it easier on them. And then I just figured I'd keep applying because... I just catch them at the right time of day when they happen to be looking and we might slide across their email. Exactly. Yeah. And like people are saying, you got to put in the work. Um, Lily, and what was your process like? Um, I just, I had, I applied three times, I think, uh, but it was like in the spam of like a few months of work. Okay. So the first time it was when they first announced it. The second time it was like six months after. So I think, mm-hmm. and I don't remember when the third time was, but the first time it was with like some isometric rooms in like 3d. The yeah. second time, it was with um, smiling apes, and the third time it was with both. And I think I got accepted at the third time, okay. after the third time. But uh, yeah, like uh, Run Run he said, you have to like show something that grabs their attention, and uh, because yeah, they're pretty VC, so they're not going to sit there and well, I maybe they do, I don't know. But you know, a lot of people wouldn't just sit there and like look through like a bunch of those stuff. And yeah, but like say, uh, like, you know, if you're giving like a big wall of uh, like text, they're not just gonna read it all. Yeah, so have, having more of a having a, a bigger portfolio that you're playing with sound like help too, because it's just one thing at first, and then second thing, and then you kind of add on to that. Yeah, and also showing your uh, if you have different art styles, then that can help a lot too, because they might not be looking for that art style, but then they can, you know, they might not be looking for another one that you have. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, if you guys have applied, like you said, just go again and just add to it and, and sort of add in some like proving, proving what, what you can to offer and, and what you have that will be sort of put you above and beyond the other hundreds of thousands of creators that are probably also applying to. So just be like, yeah, keep working and keep at it. Um, okay, oh. next. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to answer the second part of the question about being a professional artist. Yes. Um, yeah. In a sense, I was. I mean, I've been a, a professional designer for mm. many, many years, designing products, but always designing for other people or designing for other brands. The stuff we're doing now is the stuff that's been in my sketchbooks and been in my doodles and, and my personal interests that I finally found some weird people on the internet that like it too. So it's, <laughs> yeah. it's pretty cool like that. <laughs> it's nice to see that come to fruition. Yeah, and I'm already did. Sorry. Well, you, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, um, I am not uh, a professional artist. Um, I, you know, took some classes when I was younger, of course, as everyone does in school. But mm-hmm. um, I got into, you know, making digital art for my friend's Twitch streams. Okay, it nice. Just, it went from there. Um, so I made a few, uh, few avatars for people, um, you know, and then, you know, I started looking into how to get into the NFT space in preparation for the GameStop Marketplace launch because I'm an OG ape, as they would say. Um, Mm, Nice. Yeah, so it just kind of went from there. Um, I I did, uh, once I got into NFTs, since, you know, it seemed like the Marketplace launch was quite far away, um, I went ahead and started uh, uh, uploading to Polygon, and I was going to open that collection there at first and then move to Loopring uh, or, you know, GameStop. Uh, whenever it opened mm-hmm. um, but yeah before we even had our first sale in polygon uh, we decided to move to l2 uh, and it's uh, just history from there yeah it's nice to see like where you can start from it's just all it takes is just you just have to just kind of start being creative and, and start going and then the ball will just start rolling and, and you never know where you go and you, you the more you do the more you kind of inspire yourself so it sounds like that's kind of a lot of your your stories can I uh, uh, can I add on? People here, I've seen uh, literally no, uh, almost. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, go ahead. 
Yeah. Yeah, I've seen, uh, especially in the the Discord of the, the Loopring uh, community, a lot of people that just suddenly started uh, creating art, crea getting creative. Uh, that's really, uh, it's just really awesome to see. And for me and myself, I'm also not really a professional artist. I work in architecture, so I do draw a lot. I've had a lot of uh, drawing lessons. And for my own projects r right now, I'm just letting my whole fantasy uh, let loose and let free. And I'm always thinking of, of, of new new stuff to create. And since drawing this, uh, all this stuff, uh, my, my art style has gotten, got a lot better during this all. And I've seen a lot of other people in this community also get uh, a lot better with the stuff they make, which is really awesome to me. Exactly. Storm, what do you want to say? Uh, I just, I wanted to tack on that literally anybody can, can make NFTs if you've got a creative spark. I work in special education as my day job, and I am a rapper. And that's really all I had on my plate. Uh, I used to do graffiti back in the day, and that was the extent of my artistic endeavors. Yeah, uh, and that's that's now, really inspiring too. Sorry, keep going. Oh no, no, no! I'm just I'm just saying. You know, I didn't expect ever in a million years that they would pick me to be a creator. Yeah. And yeah. apparently, they liked something that I had up or something that I said, and and they chose me. I I thought they were fishing me when I got an email from them. So <laughs> totally. I think a lot of us actually felt that way. Yeah, so. or a lot of went to junk mail. I heard too. <laughs> yeah, I didn't reply for nine days. Yeah, because it nice. was in my junk mail. <laughs> yeah, for the bomb atomics, they asked us for a whole for our whole collection through Google Drive. So we were oh. super scared that it was a hacker or something like that. <laughs> wow! Yeah, yeah. Send me all your stuff, yeah. and then they go and apply. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's uh let's move on though. We got a lot of questions to get to. Uh I'm gonna go into actually I think it is this one. So there is this I know this is a lot of talk on Reddit I hear about too. And um I think Rum, you might be a good one to answer this one, but there's a lot of questions around intellectual property rights and NFTs. Um so we kinda wanna know what free what rights do um uh, to free use do you see buyers having when they purchase their NFT? And are there any technical solutions that you know of out there? Um, that can kind of help with this whole thing through Web3 solutions? So uh, first comment is I'm not a lawyer. Uh, but okay. <laughs> I have worked in... Not financial worked advice. In, yes, not financial advice. I have worked in art and design for a long time. So anytime someone creates something, it's automatically given a copyright. Um you automatically own the copyright to the thing the minute you create it. You don't even have to register it to have the copyright on it. It's yours. Um, registering it with the, um, with the government helps. It helps you when you need to defend a case. That's why people do it. Mm -hmm. um, it helps put you in line um, because it's whoever did it first is, is the rule. Okay. So the person who created the thing owns the copyright you don't own the copyright to it or have rights to it unless that person says you own the rights to it and there are some nfts that say when you buy this you own the rights you can do whatever you want with it mm -hmm. um but for most of them you don't and so then it comes into personal use and fair use and really what it comes down to is you can you can pretty much do anything you want with anything you have for your own personal use which means you could print it on a shirt and wear it around yourself but yes. you can't sell that shirt to anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, you can print it out and hang it on your wall, but you can't sell that print. And so you can use it, but it's when you start to use it in any situation where it becomes advertising for you, um, part of your brand, you're selling it to someone else. You know, that's when you start to get into areas where, you know, that's not fair use, even though, you know, people get confused because, oh, it's on the Internet. It's fair use. It's like, no, it's not. It's still copywritten. That's why there's stock photo sites and you have to pay them money for yeah. those because there's a creator behind it. And the creator needs to be paid. Yes. Um, and that's kind of funny because, like, I'm a I'm a very much an, an artist creator. I'm not necessarily a utility creator, even though my other half facto is on here. He brings the utility to us. But but as an artist, I mean people devalue two-dimensional artwork. People devalue things they can see with their eyes. If they can hold it and they can touch it or they can listen to it, then they attach more value to it. But it takes just as much work to make something you can see, even if I happen to be good at drawing, it still takes me a lot of time and struggle to make these things. And it took me 20, 30 years to get to the point I'm at. Yeah, exactly. 
I've well, gonna uh, add to this question or yeah. two. Um, yeah, uh, I've got a lot of uh, this particular question uh, to people that have uh, uh, purchased uh, one of my NFTs. Uh, people, uh, I, I always say you are free to uh, to use it for yourself, to just uh, print it on T-shirts, posters, and use it. Of course, you can uh, just do it uh, because yeah, it, it's it's uh, your NFT and uh, it's your your property now. But if you are going to to sell it, if you're going to mass pr produce uh, that particular NFT. Then I want do want to uh, that that you want to hit me up, uh, have a little conversation to to see what w w what is going to happen. Um, but uh, overall, uh, what I usually say is, um, yeah, you can do that. But please just mention uh, this NFT collection. Just mention who who made it. In any uh, if you're making uh, T-shirts from it, uh, just mention somewhere uh, that I'm the creator and this is from an NFT collection, and then we're all good. That's usually what I uh, what I tell people. Okay, that's that's good to know. It's similar to if you're just buying a physical art piece or something, and you you yeah, can go and sell yeah. that to your neighbor, but you can't you can't photocopy that and and sell all the prints to it. So it's pretty exactly. It's more yeah. The personal it's good to just focus on personal use. Do whatever you want. The second you start getting into company use and monetization, is where you have to contact the creator and and go from there. Yeah, when in doubt, just ask. Yeah, and you'll. Yeah. You know, I, I posted something in Discord the other day and somebody really liked it. I'm like, yeah, you have my permission. You can use this. So, you know, a lot of times it's not that big a deal. Exactly. Unless, you know, it's a big corporation. Yeah. You, you know, I'm, I'm not entirely sure that there are any uh, collections on the GameStop marketplace that follow uh, that sort of licensing. Um, I, I'm, and I might be mistaken on this, but I, I, I believe that, you know, everything on there is... Um, you know, it's owned by the creator, the IP. Yeah, yeah. I believe so. I think um, some of the because there are some, yeah, that. there are some collections yeah. on Loopring uh, Layer Two that are create use the Creative Commons license, um, and those uh, did not make it uh, before mm. launch. They did not get approved, so uh, that may have had something to do with that. I don't know. Yeah, they must have their own like licensing to the whatever you upload falls under i'm sure but anyways we'll move on from that question we got um another thing is we do see a lot of collaborations happening between you guys um i don't know if you can answer this i don't know if it's a back end game something or if it even exists or if it's even possible with nfts but it is there a way or do you see there in the future being a way of divvying up these royalties or are you guys just send an eth back and forth if you do like from whatever profits you get from from these collabs yeah, as of right now, we don't have a way to split royalty. So we did a, a few small collabs. And what we did is we would mint five on our wallet. They would mint five on their wallet, sell them for the same price. And then, you know, we'll just get whatever royalties we get in the future. Um, it would okay. be really cool if royalties could be split, though. Yeah, it'd be nice if you could do that within like the royalty percentage in the in the metadata. But I, I don't know if that's even possible. Yeah, there's be. some proposals to, to do that in the metadata, but... Um, as of right now, it's not possible. So yeah, hopefully I think a lot of us are waiting for GameStop to, you know, uh, allow that functionality. Yeah, I think if they can add that implementation, that that could be huge. I think. Um, the thing about that is, it you know that kind of leads into my next question because, um, that also goes with uh like charities too. So when you're working with charities, and Adam, you might be a good one to answer that this as well. Well, I mean, I guess it's the same answer, but but is there anything else you do extra or a way to keep track of the funds on 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 NFTs you're you're using to raise money for charities, or is it just a kind of similar thing and always in the same wallet and you can still track the collection earnings? Yeah, so the best way I do it is is just like you just said, just tracking um, the transaction history. I mean, it it does become tough when you're looking at the royalty side of things because of the way it's displayed right now. It's not that easy to track the royalties. Um, but for the most part, um, yeah, I just, I track the overall transactions. And and um, now that you said that, we're, I'm going to be doing a charity soon where I go to GameStop and buy a ton of toys um, for a local children's hospital. I'm going to cool. release a card for that. So that'll be fun. But as far as the... Uh, the actual functionality goes it's um i'm looking for some, them to add something to track exact royalty so i can get every penny to charity yeah that would be nice to see um one thing i I, didn't, I noticed that you mentioned that you're going to the hospitals and stuff for the toys for the kids there was a stream i did recently i don't know if you want to check them out it was uh called gamers for giving 
and they they started just as gamers they they like wanted to do they were they were organizing um just like gaming conventions at their school and then it grew into this thing where they they create these things called these go-karts and they deliver them to to like sick kids hospitals and it's like a, a cart that has a gaming console system and like a whole bunch of games loaded onto it so they can game while the, while they're stuck in there but that that might be something cool if you wanted to reach out to them too it was just a little stream i did a while back and it was it was a lot of fun i think we raised like five thousand dollars for them but they were working with them they're they're awesome and it's really cool like getting games into the hands of, of kids too 100 percent. I'll, I'll check it out yeah, yeah um it. yeah it's yeah it's it's really near and dear to my heart because uh because uh a lot of the hospitals that, that the kids grew up at, I, I, uh, I had cancer myself when I was a kid. So I, I kind of like, I can very much relate to all of this. And, uh, when I'm able to donate and I have a platform now, this is, this is amazing. Um, all the artists can pitch in and yeah, a lot of cool stuff coming. Yeah. It's so nice to be able to, to give back. Um, if I can jump into that, yeah. I want to yeah. just say, Adam, that's such a nice, uh, like way that you're going about this that you're actually physically going to go to the store and buy stuff because we're also like part of our proceeds we're donating to a charity but as of now it still feels very tangible in a sense that we're just giving the money and like we're keeping progress of where that money is going towards but that's about it so i liked your idea of actually doing something physical and then what you said brad about having a community that is for giving that's that's great. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of what I've been doing here. Like I, I started this. I don't know. You guys don't really have history here, but but um, this whole thing, like I, I've been doing this just on the side while I'm like working from home and and everything from this is going straight back to, to the community and through GameStop. Basically, it's taken from Amazon given to GameStop and given back to the community here. So it's all just sort of a full circle thing. And it's nice to see that in, in you guys and the creators on there just to see that generosity and, and community sort of working together. So it's, it's really cool to see, see you guys do that too. Yeah, the way yeah, we're, handle, oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, yeah. we're, we, we might be uh, doing something with the sloth, the sloth foundation in the future. Oh, um, nice. We've been, we've been discussing some options there, but nothing. Uh, hey, that's a nothing good concrete. Yet. It's similar to the, to the Jane Fossey gorilla foundation. Right. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I, I live in Colorado, and so had a uh, pretty big wildfire breakout in our area, and a lot of the, the locals were helping out. So we raised $2,500 with the NFT we did to support that cause. But yeah, the royalty thing got weird, and we didn't know how to handle that. So what we did is for those charity NFTs, we set our royalty at zero, because it wasn't about us making money. Oh, it was that's about, a good idea. You know, getting it out to them. Yeah, so hopefully, I mean, it'd be nice to see, I guess you guys and everyone else should push GameStop to, and I'm sure they're working on it, but to start really tracking those royalties so so you can do, say, monthly or every quarter send out the donations from those royalties that you earn. I mean, for, uh, how would you kind of keep track of it? It's like maybe taking a screenshot of what you have, and then once your collection or whatever comes out, then you can just, like, take a screenshot or see my, or like the difference when you took the screenshot and then just kind of like, you know, True. whatever you well, want to give and just, yeah. Can't you, can't you create a separate collection and, and individually see that collection's earnings or, or I guess you just see the, the total ETH volume, right? Could. Yeah. Yeah. It might yeah, be. I don't know. Good. Hopefully they introduce tools, tools to do it, do it a lot smoother. Yeah, yeah I'm sure they have yeah. a lot of yeah, those tools good. on the yeah. backlog. That's the way I'm doing it for uh like I'm just right now I'm just taking screenshots and stuff. So for example, uh a new collection I'm thinking of doing uh in the future. It's uh I don't want to say where I come from, but you know, it's like I see a lot of uh what do you call it, stray animals and a lot of uh people have to put their animal down even if their animals like super young or super healthy just because they don't have them or they have to give it up just because they don't have the money to pay for their medical bills and stuff like that and also when i see stray animals uh you know usually when i walk my dog and stuff i try to bring water and food with me that uh i may have just to give it to these animals because you know like i do feel bad when i see them so i try to feed them if i can 
And yeah, uh, so what I want to do is I would this collection just take a bunch of that uh, from the, what do you call it? A bunch of the profits and then just uh, either help uh, what's those places uh help uh sanctuaries or like you know places where they help animals in need or pay for people for their medical bills for their animal medical bills so they don't have to give up their dog or put it down just just because that's, they can't pay for it that's so awesome to hear and it's so nice to see like all the things that are near and dear to, to each of you guys and and see you guys kind of doing something for that and that that's really where i mean that's where this this whole community i think will shine to is just just showing off what what we can do for for those things that, that matter to us and, and that we care about so uh, thank, thank you thank you all for in? yeah go yeah go ahead come on jump in oh. um well our collection bombatomics it's an all uh women matter collection and it's because well part of our um uh, we're giving to a charity that helps women in Mexico that are suffering from violence or from sexual violence or their children too, because the situation here in Mexico with femicides and all that, that hor horrible stuff, it's re really bad right now. And it's really hard to help because the government doesn't even help much. So this was an excellent opportunity to do something about it because it's very frustrating as a woman to really not be able to do anything. And we're just very happy with the outcome of our project and the organization is also super happy. That's amazing. Is it is it a portion of the current collection you have up or is it a new one that you're, you're minting? It's a portion of the... Bombatomics. Okay, nice. That's I love those too. They're 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 awesome. You did a good job Thank on those. Yeah, that's, I'm that's quite really a big cool. fan. I have too many <laughs> <Yeah>. of them. <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> yeah. Uh, so well, I mean, it's so awesome to see everyone taking a part in in all this charity because I mean, like I said, that that's sort of what it's all about. But let's move on to another question. Oh, sorry. Can I just oh, add one more yeah, thing? Yeah. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I I might as well talk about it here just because sure. why not? Um. So I don't know if anybody's seen the monkey business collection. Um, and yeah, it kind of yeah. ties into um, it kind of ties into an earlier question about tying physical objects to NFTs. Um, soon, um, my fiance makes all the the wood burning art for that uh, monkey business collection. Soon, she's going to be releasing uh, NFTs tied to physical uh, yeah. pet portraits. So you'll be able to you know buy a pet portrait and exchange it for an actual physical pet portrait to be sent to you. Uh, that is wood burned of your pet and a portion of that is going to go to animal rescue as well oh that's amazing is that is that are those all like did you 3d scan all that too this it's the real wood burning. no that's a real picture of, yeah. of the wood burning and it's just animated a bit yeah that's amazing well that's cool to know i didn't know that that was going to be part of a, a charity as well too so it's cool to see like yeah i mean the thing is you cut out the middleman you can do so much more with the money yep so that's what that's Absolutely. what's cool about it you're not you're not giving it to to, to all these yeah, the middlemen, right the middlemen are all about the money yeah yeah exactly you it's more than we've had around. so yeah, yeah. Mind yeah. Mm -hmm. i think you can uh you know judge by our conversation that you know most of us are not all about money no no we're all we're all pretty i mean you guys are all pretty just standard humans and apes and uh, i can see that too and it's nice to sort of see you guys get the success you have and then see what you can do with that too and pay it forward. But anyways, let's move on from that. And I do want to talk about just sort of the mechanics of it. And I know, I know Adam, you um, were dealing with this a bit and um, we want to know like there it's, it's kind of tough and you guys are, are sort of judging the waters as you go in terms of supply and demand and scarcity, but sort of what have you been doing and what are your plans for the future on, on navigating that um yeah so when i originally released my card collections on twitter um i kind of gauged how quickly those sold out and um kind of just looked at the supply and and, and just kind of seeing the demand out there um I, I didn't really expect the the demand to be as much as it has been 
um, especially with the pixel toys. So I think the cards are at a good <laughs> yeah. level. Um, they sell pretty quick, but I think it still gives everyone a chance to get them. Um, but with the pixel toys, I'm finding that I didn't, I, I don't make enough. You know, people were getting super frustrated yesterday because um, they didn't even get a chance to see the price. Like it was gone in seconds. So yeah. um, I'm, I'm trying to come up so, with solutions. Uh, I think uh, GameStop it, hopefully is going to be implementing some stuff to perhaps limit the amount of um, uh, NFTs a wallet can and grab of the same one for you know just like floor sweeping and um, perhaps maybe preventing bots from jumping in and, and swooping stuff because uh right now it's it's hard to get a, a gauge on scarcity and too much saturation that's going on because it's uh things are gone in seconds or or they sit there too long and it's I, we're still so fresh that uh and there's not enough features yet to kind of perfectly gauge it that it's it's just kind of the wild west right now yeah, exactly. And hopefully, hopefully that's in the works. I'm sure. I mean, obviously it's a beta, and I'm they're working on a lot of stuff. So I'm sure that that will be coming too. I'm even just a simple captcha, even as well. So we'll see where they go from from there. Um, Don't say that word captcha. Yeah, that's not a word you want. No, that's PTSD. Another word here. No, that's, no, that's, no, that's, that's, no, that's, that's a bad word. Stand. Yeah, don't say bad that word. word. That? Wait, 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 explain. Yeah, that. if you if you if we were trying to mint too fast, oh. then we get stuck in captcha jail, captcha hell. <laughs> so. Okay, yeah, so no cap. I mean, a thousand, uh, thousands of uh, NFTs that's, that can get uh, quite annoying. To yeah, I think I'll have yeah. capture yeah. PTSD for the next few years. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see an airplane anymore or a boat or a bicycle. Oh, or oh God, or, or a dump truck, or a bedroom, or, or a bus, or a bus. plane, or yeah. That's a little inside joke for everyone in chat. Sneak peek. <laughs> Okay, that kind yeah, of went into my next be question. Be prepared to uh, click on trucks and airplanes. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you're was, teaching AI, thinking, so you're doing something good. <laughs> I was thinking if we all did well in the marketplace, we should pull together and buy a dump truck and just like all roll up on GameStop headquarters. Uh, yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> ask, them to, ask, them to, ask them what it is. <laughs> print out 10 million copies of Point a caption dump and truck. dump it on their front lawn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, find, find the dump truck in the pile. <laughs> Okay, uh, anyways, let's, we got to move on to the next one. Uh, Miso, this is one for you. Have fun with it. Um, nope, that's not it. Where is it? Oh, next one here. Uh, nope, that one. Miso, can you provide any clarification on the Nintendo, Xbox, PlayStation, etc. collections that were created? Is it just a... YOLO, screw it, I can do it, or is or or do you have to? Are you audio blinking twice because of NDA? <laughs> or oh. are you not comfortable answering? Go ahead. Okay, I'm gonna try to explain it in, <laughs> in a short and clear as possible. <laughs> and I'm just good. gonna straight up say that I'm not ready for this AMA at all. So, uh, can I scream for a little bit? Yes, go do okay, whatever you want. The floor is yours. Right. Okay. So it was two days prior to the launch. And mind you, we had no idea when the launch was going to be at all. And it was two days prior to the launch. I had incentives to add collections that is tied to my name, to my, to my work, to my crafts, such as Cyber Deluxe, Cyber Deluxe, and all that jazz, miso soup, soup, delicious soup, and, all. Mm -hmm. and everything like that's tied to my name. And then I had another incentive to to reserve collection names for future creators, such as Hootie Brains, which, is, which he just got on board like last week. But then I misspelled Hootie Brains because Hootie Brains with, with a dash, <laughs> and I didn't add the dash, so it, does, it, does, it didn't really matter. And then I added collections. Uh, other collection names was um, Amphers, that motherfuckers collections. And honestly, I've already forgotten like the other collection names that I reserved for for future creators. And then I had another incentive to, to actually test the limitations of the website, of the beta website, of how many number, how, how, like, what's the maximum number of collections I can add. Okay. And, and it's because, like, I like to tinker, tinker a lot. I mean, if you know, um, uh, like since I've been in the in the Looper and Discord community, I like to tinker a lot. And part of the reason being is because like I like I I want to know a lot. And the other thing is like I wanted to report any bugs, any glitches to, to the dev team. 
And, and so I did it. I added a, a lot of like other collection of names that are just like a bunch of meme names and also other corporate Web2 names just for the sake of like me claiming those names and I can give it to GameStop so nobody can, else can claim it. But then I forgot to, to claim Super Stonk. And you know what happened, like that Super Stonk um, collection names. Basically, literally just cash grabs. And, oh, okay. um, and so I did it. And I got to the point where I actually hit the maximum number of oh. amount of collections I had. And I'm actually in capture hell right now. Uh oh. Oh, you got to capture all the approve all those. <laughs> it's actually worse than capture jail. It's capture hell. <laughs> capture purgatory. Yep. Exactly. Okay, so that's I mean that's good to know. So basically, yeah, you just did it so you can hold on so no other one, no one who's like doing it for ill intent comes in and steals swoops those and you can just Exactly. Toss and them back I was GameStop not if they need it. Right. And I wasn't doing it for the purpose of me trying to sell it no, like no. DNS or like domain names because those are not tradable. And I was just trying to like test the limitations of the website and that's it. I'm not even profiting any anything yeah, at all. I'm in capture jail. I'm in capture jail. <laughs> <laughs> and I've seen the Reddit posts. I've seen Oh, of seen, course. Like, I know you have. And all that. <laughs> well, people get and, hyped. People got hyped for it. They're like, oh shit. And then obviously, you know, you know, Super Stonk, they kind of snowball it and then and then they think other things. So I know I totally see exactly what you did. And I mean, I don't think there's no harm done. It's just I think people wanted an answer. That's it. Yeah. They they wanted to know is is Nintendo jumping on board, but you just saved it. We can all chill. <laughs> I forgot to add Nintendo though. So oh, nice. That's... <laughs> but yeah, yeah that's so, about it. Well, that did you actually did you actually mint anything in those collections or were they Nope, splint? I did not no. mint anything. Yeah. Hmm. I'm curious how people found out cuz they Well, you be... can you can just search in the search bar anything and it, if there's a collection it'll show it. But I don't oh, think it lets you go to it. It'll just go to a blank page. So you can type anything you want, and you'll you'll see if there's a collection there for it. Right. Because okay. I and have reserved like, some collection names for our future stuff, and I just I didn't. Yeah, if I knew the name that you reserved, I would be able to search it. But I'd have to know the name or or term. Understood. But yeah, yeah. So so you can. Yeah. That's that's how you can see that. And okay, also, well, like, what's interesting yeah. is the collection name is, is not under the URL of uh, the username or, or the creator who makes it. It's, like, it's on its own. It's collections URL. Mm, yeah, yeah. So it's fully transferable to whoever. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. But, yeah. Well, yeah, no, so that was a perfect answer. Pretty short that. explanation. I look like a family oh. cameo here. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. That was, that was perfect. That clears everything up. Okay. I just wanted to get rid of the hype in case I just don't want people over overreacting to things. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, I mean, GameStop is a pretty big gaming company in and of itself. I mean, you can pretty much like speculate like those big companies going to swoop in in coming months anyway. Oh, they'll be there. They'll be there eventually. Pokemon, right. and GameStop, definitely. Right. Just a matter but, of time. Right. Yeah. But yeah, that's about it, Brad. Cool. Well, no, that's a perfect answer. I appreciate it. Thank um, you. Next, we have we're gonna we're getting sort. Of Sort of towards the end here, we're going to focus on a bit of the gaming and NFTs and just kind of free open floor discussion about what you're excited for the future. So first one we got here is what is the possibility you think we will see single player triple A games sold as NFTs where you can utilize that as the key to play and sort of like you would be able to rent that game out, rent that NFT out or, or trade it, send it to your friend if you want to go over and play there. Basically similar to a physical game. And then also, can you expand on any paths you might foresee triple aims going down in relation to NFTs? Um, I feel like uh, right now the game industry is kind of like testing it at the moment, mm -hmm. and the backlash is not is not uh, worth it for them. So the project is going to hold off on that until they see more uh, bigger companies jump in. So then. Right now, they're kind of, you know, like letting the big companies and all that they can afford it to just kind of like test the waters and see how everyone reacts. And once people get more used to uh, seeing NFTs for like with bigger companies and stuff, then they'll start doing it. And once people learn, because I feel like a lot of people are not really, uh, they don't really understand how NFT works and like that you actually own your stuff, then... Uh, right now, they just see it, like you said earlier, like just JPEGs and stuff like that. So once they understand that you actually own that and they cannot take it from you, for example, like with what happened with PlayStation or Steam, 
where they remove the movies and the games, then those people would actually get to own their stuff. And even if the shop or something closed down, then they would still have it. And once they understand that, uh, more people are going to jump in and maybe maybe more people are going to be asking for it. So more companies are going to start getting in on it. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I think the the communities involved and, and the, the actual gamers are going to be the ones that push that because it'll just be a demand that's created there once everyone sees the, the utility and the ability that you have to, to actually own parts of your game and, and the, the work and time that you put into it. And then when you're done playing it, you can go and sell that and actually get part of the money back that of your, part of your time back. So it's, it'll yeah. be, I think the adoption will be driven by what the community demands and eventually the companies are going to have to fold to it. Yeah. And I feel like people are going to love that because um, I have a friend who plays league of legends and there it's a free game, but not really. Cause you have to, if you want skins, yeah. you have to uh, buy the skins. Some of them are like really expensive. And uh, I think he spent like, three thousand something dollars throughout his like the time he wow. played yeah and then he lost his account because he got banned so he lost all that money and he was really upset he asked for them if he could have the money back or something and of course he said no but uh it's that thing you know like when people make fun of like others own buying nft saying oh you could you just bought a photo that i can just like copy and save you know yeah, uh that makes not sense. that it's like you're well, owning yeah that's the current sentiment but you know people yeah. just the the NFT in people's minds equals JPEG mm-hmm. exactly. and not digital asset. Exactly. Because, like, for example, going back to the example, it's like you bought those skins that you don't even own or anything. You just give money away for free. But if it was like, if they would have done it like in this way, like as an NFT, then you actually own the skins. And even if your account got banned, you at least still have that. You can sell them back and get your money back. So, yeah, exactly. That's a good point. Uh, does anyone else have anything to add to that? If not, I'm going to move on to the next question. Well, I mean, you yeah. already have markets like CSGO, right? Yeah. Who's are, are trading millions a day in digital assets, but they're just not on the blockchain is the only difference. Yeah, uh, exactly. And it goes away so, with your account, right? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, not only are those fungible, um, mm-hmm. the things that you're paying thousands of dollars for, um, they're not transferable. Good point. And I, and like, I know Steam's pretty hard anti NFT. And I mean, I can see why that's probably extremely profitable for them, right? Well, yeah, because they're running an NFT platform, just not on the blockchain, basically. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's exactly what they're doing. Yeah, I, I'm actually a physical game, video game collector. Um, I like retro games and just, you know, the, the physical stuff. And, and one yeah, of the yeah. big reasons people do that is because you know, it can retain some retail value, uh, resale value. They can go back to a used video game store or whatever, resell that. And I've been trying to explain to people that this kind of makes digital assets more akin to physical assets in that sense. Yeah, you're exactly right. It's it's kind of where we're going with this whole metaverse augmented reality thing too, where digital and, and physical are just going to sort of intermingle and become one. And. <clears throat> the way I see it is, you know, the old guy, the bunch here, is this is um, this is like back when the the internet started in the early '90s when the internet was weird. There was weird stuff going on, a lot of stupid websites, a lot of just strange things, and it was experimentation because nobody knew exactly what this thing was for or how it was going to be a part of our future. But there was some of us that realized it was going to be part of the future. And there was a lot of experimentation, a lot of strange stuff. And a lot of that ended up going away and some of that stuck around. Um, but that's where I feel like we're at with crypto in general is we're at that early stage while it's still trying to figure itself out. Right. Yeah. If you go back and you look at some of the news articles and, and uh, things that people were talking about when, you know, during the, the rise of the internet, um, you're going to find a lot of similarities to the things that people are saying about NFTs today, for sure. And blockchain in general. Yeah, exactly. I also think that, I also think that when people uh, start uh, having to use NFTs within games, that they then uh, see the the profits from it, uh, that they are able to sell their own uh, uh, stuff within their their own items to other people, that they can actually sell their own or trade uh, games with each other, and part of the, the profits that uh, that uh, secondhand selling of those NFTs, uh, game NFTs, go, can still go to the to the bigger corporations. 
but this way uh, you uh, yeah you you can just uh, like a, a physical game you can just uh, sell it when you're done with it and uh, still a part of that those proceeds go to the go to the actual gaming companies so yeah, think, exactly. uh, it's constant royalties yeah. there, n never ending. And I mean, yeah, it, yeah. I saw cautiously in chat, you made a good point. WoW accounts, um, the resale of those was a booming business. And, and a lot of people right. don't have time to spend like gearing up a character in, in WoW or a game. And, and they like people, people buy in game items and battle passes and things to get in the head because they don't, they don't have the time. Like gamers are getting older that like myself too included, like we might have more, um, income to 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 spend there but not not the time to put into it so people are willing to to spend that money on those in-game items and then like it's already proven people it's a 80 80 plus billion dollar a year industry and when once you can then actually own that and get your money back or even possibly earn money on that or even just 50 percent loss even if it if it's a item that maybe isn't worth much but just getting some of that money back why the hell would you not want to do that yeah, absolutely. My my whole Steam yep. library is now full of games that I've either never played or just uh, played once and then uh, l l let go of it. So if I could just uh, sell those with, uh, I don't know, 50% uh, proceeds going to uh, to uh, to the company itself, that would be awesome. Yeah, exactly. And and that's the other thing too is it's gonna drive like it's gonna drive demand for replayability and and companies are just going to have to make better games because it's the the income that they earn is going to be completely tied to how good their game is and how replayable it is and what what the community's like in it. and it'll be a much more enjoyable game like if you if you have a game and i mean league's an exception where it's it's very toxic community and a lot of people still play but but i mean if if you have if you don't have that community behind you it's you're not going to get that support and you need that by creating something of value and something good not just something to just take as much money from everyone's pockets as you can absolutely now yeah. let's let's not be naive though they're gonna do that too well of course <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're gonna find another <laughs> way to do try, it yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> but I, I, at least bring us along for the ride a bit <laughs> yeah i mean this is a tool that's all it is it's yeah. it's it's just one device of many to to make things happen but and, I do, yeah. yeah i do yeah, think i feel that, like there's uh, oh, sorry go ahead yeah, I do think that companies that will uh, make it fair for the, their buyers and uh, that they uh, like like Valve there was like a uh, few as 10 years ago. Uh, when companies uh, do uh, handle the NFTs in a very fair way, those will be the new uh, companies that are going to be very successful, I think. But it does need some time to, uh, to go that place. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there's really going to be one like, you know, straw that broke the camel's back sort of scenario where you'll have a, a, a game that's big enough and well-known enough to start a trend. Uh, and then NFT adoption after that will, will become mainstream. Um, but, you know, it's going to take the, the Yahoo of NFTs basically um, to get that ball rolling. I feel like. Yeah. I got to say too, I was around back when I was playing the original half-life and team fortress classic, you know, when valve released steam, and everybody, it seemed like everybody hated Steam. <laughs> like the gaming communities that I was in, anyway. They just I remember. Absolutely hated it. Well, people hate change. Yeah, it's a, it, yeah. It's a pretty standard psychological. Concept, they also, they also hate their their cool little thing that they identify themselves with, becoming more accessible to other people. Because right. then all of a sudden they're not the weird cool ones that understand things you don't. Yeah, yeah, that's why there was such a backlash. To I can't remember who it was, but somebody raised their collection limit recently uh, from like a thousand to five thousand or something like that, and there was a little bit of a backlash just for that very reason. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Could I could I follow up on uh, a great point Brad made earlier in regards yeah, to uh, Wow, that that MMO game? I mean, a lot of MMOs are uh, very time consuming, right? Um, they take mm -hmm. time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And but the great thing about that genre in particular, they've they've obviously generated massive economies within within itself. So like uh, trading economies, like trading armor, etc., titles or, or or whatever. So obviously, there's great opportunity for these developers to to bank on royalties with that. But what I do think people are not looking at is um, with the implementation of NFT technology in these actual in-game economies, I think that they will be discreetly taking advantage of 
um, a plague really that has been taking over the gaming industry, which are boosting communities. Um, these are obviously illegal communities that offer uh, in-game services for a real currency majority of the time. And I think with an efficient NFT uh, working system, these communities are actually taking money away from the developers um, with the with this with the uh, NFT technology, they will be able to actually contribute to these in-game economies and allow them to become more thriving. So I do think NFT tech um, does, in a sense, solve some of the boosting um, issues or boosting economies that do exist within um, uh, many of right. these. Right. So that you'd have to force them to transact on the blockchain instead of on their own personal yeah. website where you're trading real money for in-game currency. Ooh, yeah, and providing that when people Absolutely. wouldn't have to go to those websites, right? That's a good point. You you kind of yeah. eliminate that because you give people when you give people the option to to get something legit and it's going to be another middleman too. gone. Yeah. Well, there, yeah, that's an exact yeah, example I, I, of a middleman right there. Yeah. And um I I think the I think communities I mean these developing these studios don't really want boosting communities regardless, but the thing is I don't think you'll ever get rid of them. No. Um no. they'll be there, but this is a way that you can actually have them contribute to your in-game economy and allow it to obviously be more sustainable and obviously thrive. Yeah, they can provide that liquidity. <laughs> Maybe yeah, they'll absolutely. be the market makers of the in-game economies. <laughs> no, because uh, honestly, I think um, they once this uh, NFT gaming becomes a thing, you'll definitely see communities banding together, um, offering services. Um, so I think, yeah, we'll definitely be seeing more of that as we progress into that world. Yeah, that's a good point. You you might yeah you could see full on communities coming up and 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 basically providing those those uh, like farming those items or whatever to sell so people have them available and 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 that totally could add to it too. I I can I can see that as being like because it's each in game is gonna have sort of their own economy and and however that plays out that plays out but but that's definitely something that could be an adder it, it could be taken advantage of obviously too but but you have a community that that gathers together that just provides for this game and, and adds to the to the game that that definitely could be a plus it's a good point well i just i just had a thought uh of how that could work against uh the developer's favor if you know let's say like someone on 4chan organizing a, a community of people to you know, buy an NFT that gets you a ticket to the game and then burn those so that, you, you know, you would have less access to that game. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, there are trolls out there that, yeah. that do that sort of thing all the time. Yeah, I would say, I would say that, you know, geez, it would be up to the game developer, I guess, if the game is not itself on the chain, you know, and can be updated, it would be up to the developer to, to sort of, uh, mint a fresh new set of, of keys and you know implement that into the game but man yeah i don't know that would be a malicious that'd be like a ddos attack oh that's a good point right. so like say they mint a million uh keys to the game and someone buys five hundred thousand and just burns those now there's less supply well just look there. at the slide the cyber clone uh nfts mm -hmm. like you you the card the cyber clone card gets you access so let's say somebody buys five thousand or I, I can't remember the the float of those right now, but let's say somebody buys half the float yeah. and burns them. Like, what happens to the game mm -hmm. after that? Like, I mean, that obviously the value. Money, that well, cost a whole yeah, lot of money. True. True. That's true. It but would, but yeah. yeah, I guess you could get you could like attack the game and and but, yeah, but I mean, yeah. you just mint something new and, and tie that key to to the access of the game. I guess. True. So yeah, uh, these it, are good points. Um, I'm per personally in regards to actually minting the actual. Uh, game as an nft uh, for the moment I'm, I'm quite opposed to the idea obviously because there's malicious actors and I, and, mm. and if we're talking about triple a rated games like major games I, I don't think they would be minting their game uh, as an nft because they I, I don't think they want scarcity when it comes to that i think the game uh, wants to be accessible as possible but i think what i think the step we should be saying eventually is to start with cosmetics like somebody mentioned earlier like with and I think this is really where the opportunity lies. Yeah, you're right. I think that's where the focus is. Is and it, I mean, just look at the mobile gaming market too. It, it, that's exactly what it is. It's all it's all in game items. I I could see tying accounts to an NFT, but not the game specifically. Maybe that'll get there eventually, where where they can mint unlimited NFTs, and then and then it just gives you or like constantly be minting new ones that is the same game, and then it just gives you the ability to sort of play that game anywhere but i guess i well, mean that's just the same thing with logging in right now i guess so 
minting a game. Well, if, right. if they minted a, a game as an NFT, it's unchangeable after that point. So you couldn't patch it. You couldn't add any updates or anything no, like that. So I would you I do it? See that, that would be very feasible. Yeah, I was thinking as like a key, but but again, like I mean, I guess to fight DRM is is. I, d I do think you can make a, a, a custom contract uh, that just uh, means uh, infinite games from that same type of game. Okay. And that yeah. can go uh, on and on. Uh, like, you don't have to put a max uh, in, into a minting co contract. You can just set it up. And when someone buys the game, it mints in that moment. Uh, that is, that's the same uh, way a lot of uh, Layer 1 uh, NFTs work. When you buy an NFT, uh, you mint it uh, in that process. And I think that could also work for uh, the video games. Yeah, and that, yeah, and once uh, go ahead. I was gonna say once the zk EVM stuff. Uh, I don't know if you guys are following that, but essentially, you know, that would give us smart contracts on layer two. Once that comes to fruition, um, we'll be able to write custom contracts that do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and, and that'll I solve mean, the royalties issues and you know yeah. all the all that other stuff we talked about. And buying buying a game as an NFT does bring it back to the physical age where if I had Call of Duty on a CD and my friend wanted to borrow it, I owned it so I could give it to him. Whereas, so if you did have that game NFT mint, it, it just has to be basically a key to the game. He, I don't want to play it anymore. He wants to play it. I can send it to his wallet because I own that, and and he can play it. It won't be. I don't think it'll be an economy sort of because there will be unlimited available from the developer. But it just puts. Sharing right. of the game. But you might and, have and another it... situation like. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No, no. Go ahead. That was done. Yeah, I think you might have another situation like Netflix had, um, where people were just sharing their accounts on and off, and uh, eventually that <laughs> didn't end well uh, for Netflix. Um, so I do think, uh, for the moment, uh, yeah, I mean, minting them, minting the actual game or whatever, uh, I think it's a good good idea to have but i think um it's going to be very difficult to flesh out because yeah. obviously um i don't think the developers will be banking as much cash as they would like uh I, I think the majority of that money if they do implement nfts within their game obviously i think uh one of the biggest selling points i think would be the actual them actually distributing the game themselves because i mean would they prefer uh, me to buy the game of somebody else for a cheap amount or would i just would they not prefer somebody else to come and buy it off them or obviously yeah, that's true. Yeah, of course. Well, obviously, you know, I do. If you if you do it that way, you could eliminate publishers completely. Oh, that's a good point. Like, go right from game studios yeah. to yeah. to the to the gamer. Right. Hmm. That's so, the thing. Like, We're like, you might see a rise of, of of these indie developers going with that as they grow and grow and grow. Yeah, I think I, I you know. I think the, the 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 trend for this call is just eliminate the middleman. Yeah, uh, I think that's takes, sort of the take one point away. <laughs> yeah, it's it's get rid of the middleman. It's, it's get rid of the middleman, empower the little man. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, I agree. Um, okay, I mean, we kind of covered all the gaming questions that I had. Uh, we did have, yeah, the the pay to play and um, talking about in game items as a viable business model. We sort of covered all that in the, the discussion. I guess um, we're kind of running out of time here, and then we do have some giveaways to get to as well. Uh, it was just a small announcement from Abanti, but um, maybe just one last thing. I don't know if anyone wants to just talk about sort of what, I mean, Web 3.0, NFTs in general. Is there anything just you're looking forward to the most, whether it be near term or long term? Any thoughts floating around in your heads? Floor's open. I'd love to see to uh, social media accounts tied to the blockchain. Oh, that's an interesting. How would that work? Oh, I'm not sure. I'm not a programmer; I'm just an artist. But well, like um, in, in what what uh, what kind of concept? Um. Well, I mean, your you know your profile could be uh you know on the blockchain, and you know the stuff that you you say uh mm -hmm. could could be uh found on there as well. I like I said, I don't know the, the you know uh, details about it, but um I feel like that's the next logical step for social media. I think that's right. Friend. Go ahead. Uh, I had a friend who was into one called UHive. Um, I, I didn't look too much into it, but it kind of it, it kind of reminded me of um, sort of like a Web three GeoCities in a way. Like okay. it was a social network, but you have like your own space, and that space itself is an NFT. 
and um, you could, you know, create your space and add content to it and all, all that stuff. And then you could theoretically resell it. I don't know if they had actually implemented sort of a marketplace where you could do that, but they were in the initial stages of making all that. Um, so are possible. you talking about sort of like on cyber? Uh, I'm not sure. Like I haven't, I haven't really looked. Well, the interesting yeah. thing about like going with doing doing like social media too is I can see that tying into this whole metaverse thing that's coming too, where where everything's kind of amalgamating into one, and you got you got sort of every every platform and and piece of software can communicate with each other, and that's just yeah, I I see you having one one social media profile that then ties into everything. Like I know with uh it kind of reminds me of Nvidia's doing this thing called the Omniverse and they and it was actually uh Pixar who developed it it was a 3D modeling um file type called USD is universal scene description and that's basically the the HTML of of the 3D world and I I see that being used in the future of the metaverse too um but having having that it and it's all these companies are also sort of agreeing on standards and commonality so I definitely see social media platforms kind of coming yeah, just, that, that commonality too just think about how many games you get the option to log in with facebook now yes yeah exactly right. so you log you in know, with your you, wallet yeah you log in with your wallet and then you have the nft uh or you know uh related to whatever it is you're doing mm -hmm. uh well and if or, you think of it even your even, account on there yeah and even with all this all this oh nfts are only jpegs but but now that's very easy to grab that jpeg texture and apply it to anything that you're any type of metaverse that you're in, it, it could be it, it. You have that access now, and that's all in your wallet. So it's just it's just a wallet for for basically everything on the internet and everything that'll be in the metaverse as we sort of transition into this real physical world, virtual world tie together. So it's it's kind of like the the backbone of that of the whole thing. I could see that being. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be really cool to see people kind of be really creative with the online identities that they create and not necessarily just gamers, you know, like a lot of mm -hmm. gamers, you know, they'll like build a whole Minecraft world and that's like how they express themselves. But I, I'm, I'm talking about like just even non gamers, like bringing them in and showing them like, Hey, you can have this house, you know, mm -hmm. you can put whatever you want to in it and, and connect your wallet and put all your NFTs in it. And I don't know. It's just gonna be really cool to see that as it comes, comes about. Yeah, no, you're, you're totally right. Because that, I mean, that's why you see, all these massive companies, metaverse this, metaverse that, metaverse this, metaverse that, because people do tie real value to those things. And and you you said it exactly. People are going to care about their online persona and and their their sort of avatars and what they own in in the metaverse because as augmented reality progresses and and it's it's as common as a phone or or replaces our phones. It's the digital world's world's going to overlay our world everywhere, and and it's just going to put more and more value to that. So and that's a that's a very good point. Yeah, uh, I anything, wanna, anyone else have anything? Yeah, go ahead. Well, mine's not about the future. Mine's about now and uh, yeah. being being one of the the artists people here. Um, the it's just a JPEG thing, kind of grinds me a little bit because no one walks into a gallery and says oh these are just canvases or oh that's just <laughs> photo paper you know it's not the yeah. medium it's the art on the medium exactly. and yeah i know there is a lot of low effort stuff and a lot of people will sit and say oh i could have done that but you didn't yes you know so yeah. um <laughs> you're, you're right <laughs> so, you know but like as as an artist it's it's a little frustrating where it's that same thing. If it's a 2D thing you can see with your eyes, for some reason, we, our brains just won't put the value on it. Even mm -hmm. though we see everything with our eyes, we watch TV, we look at how people look, we look at what they're dressing, we look at their cars, we admire, you know, games for their quality of lighting and everything. And that's all 2D. But for some reason, our, our brain just, you know, oh, that's 2D. That's easy. That shouldn't be. I shouldn't pay for that. You should do that for free because you like it. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's it's really weird. Like Dolly Parton can write Jolene in a bathroom in five minutes and make millions off of it the rest of her life. But, you know, pertinent pen can paint these amazing paintings. And then it's the the little quick 20 minute chibis that are that are flying off the shelf. So 
Yeah. And, and <laughs> Galaxy, you made a good place. point in chat. It, it, it's the experience and interaction with the art that really drives the value to it. And that's exactly, I think, where this whole Web 3.0 metaverse thing will help it out. And, and that's, that's, you're exactly right there. Like, there, yeah. there should be no difference. We see it with our eyes, and it's just all about your interaction with, with the piece. Yeah. Well, that's part, of my, that's my part of this whole venture, right? Is I don't have an artistic bone in my entire body mm-hmm. as far as, you know, any art talent, but I can, I can code. So that's, you know, I'm going to try to bring new ways of enjoying Rum's art to people. And, and so I, I don't know. There's, I, I kind of think of NFTs as like equally art and tech. And that's what's really, yeah, really cool, I think. Mm-hmm. And, but yeah, I, I do. I, yeah, it does grind my gears too when people are like, oh, that's just a JPEG or whatever. And I'm like, first of all, it's a PNG. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah, it's lossless. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just a well, matter okay. Of time. So I feel the need to bring up AI art at this point, since we're talking about oh yeah, good, e- good point. Creation and and you know, um, there's been a lot of discussion about this, um, both within the creator communities and just communities at large. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really know how I feel about it yet, um, but it seems to be that there's a lot of it coming out, and not everyone that is producing it is. Uh, being honest about how it was produced. Yes, um, I, I agree. So um, I'm, I'm just curious uh, if anyone else here had anything. Uh, to, yeah, you to guys are the that. creators. Go expand on that. Tell me your thoughts on that whole AR thing and, and where you see it going or, or pros and cons. Yeah, I, I feel the same. Benefit. Yeah. Go ahead, Niels. Yeah, go. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just saying, uh, I'm, uh, yeah, it's uh, we we experimented uh, with each other all uh, on the DAI uh, art, mm-hmm. and um, I think uh, one of you here had the license to to use one of the AIs, and it's pretty easy to just uh, enter some words and get really amazing result, uh, results. So. Um, it looks a little bit too easy to just enter something, uh, uh, copy it, and then mint it, and then ask uh, a lot of uh, yeah. It it uh, even though it does look really really good and really well, um, mm. yeah, it it does leave a little bit of a bad ta- a bad taste uh, in in a lot of creators' mouths. Yeah, I see. To be honest, I see. I mean, especially where AI is right now, I see it being where it should be used mostly as a tool set at, for for inspirations. Where I mean. If you're making an art or something, you'll you'll have reference images and drawings and all that to, to yeah, reference from and, and use for inspirations. I see it uses being used as that is a, I think is a, a legit tool, but but just typing in some words yeah. and, and saving the image that's that's kind of I don't think a lot of people do agree with that. And I mean, as the AI gets better and better, it'll be harder and harder to tell the difference between that. But um, exactly. I know people do sometimes take it and do a lot of editing and and but I think using it for inspiration is is where sort of I draw the line personally, but I mean, yeah, go ahead and share your other opinions on that too. Um, well, I mean, sorry, go ahead. Or do you want me to go first? Go ahead. Yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, I just feel like we're about AI too until I recently started like messing with it just because I saw some other people doing mm-hmm. it. So I wanted to try it before just judging. And uh, it actually, uh, well, it depends. Some of the stuff I noticed that you can just type a few words and then it gives you something. But then if you really want something really descriptive, you really have to like enter a description, like what you want. And it's not just like just typing words. No, there's like apparently a void that you have to talk to the to the computer or whatever uh, so it can understand you better. And then you also have to like sh- uh, be detailed about what you want, like the lighting, the render, what type of like, uh style you want and you can if apparently if you know how to like say all these things you can really manipulate it to give you something that you really have in mind so it's not just like typing um yeah, yeah it's definitely i mean i guess there would be a, a, an art yeah, so, to prompt creation mm-hmm. but yeah but you know beyond that i'm not sure yeah so like i'm using my like i just started like uploading some AI just because i thought it was fun but uh, mm-hmm. it, it's not like for example, I some of it, a lot of the ones I use, I just do it for fun and also for inspiration, like a lot of you say. But the one I've been uploading, it's just like, uh, what do I call it? It's not just like 
I download the image and then I just upload it because I and yeah, I feel like that's really lazy and I wouldn't want to do that. Uh, usually what I do is I take a bunch of images and I try to like make something that goes with each other. So it's just like a big, big, like I take them to Photoshop and I just like mix them with each other, try to like manipulate it as well, even more. Well, and like, and like you're saying too, with, with learning how to, how to prompt the AI too, is it also sort of a, a where you, you can kind of create a story through it and then, and then you can tie all the pieces together and then, and sort of have a little bit of, at least have some sort of um i guess story or creativity behind it as well by utilizing like the prompts in the ai yeah I, yeah i feel like you can get to that point but yeah, like i said if you're just like giving it words and then it gets to you where you want it but then you don't do any more uh like editing to it or you don't mess with it anymore and you just upload it like that then in my opinion even if you enter all the like you give a detailed description yeah that's good you know you know how the ai works but i still think it would be lazy yeah but if um, you take all that and then you do something more then at least you put some work into yeah. it yeah dev muffin has a good question too and i'm wondering this too like th does the ai company have the rights to that or, or do you have to okay. connect with them and, and get like get the permission to to it utilize depends on which one you use okay yeah it depends right yeah. can so i chime in on this ai yeah thing? yeah go yeah. ahead so here's the thing i love ai art what i don't like is people claiming their ai art is their craft like because i've right. seen a lot of people like claiming like oh yeah there's like it's my old painting art i made it turns out it's wombo art Mm. <laughs> yeah, I hate yeah, those guys who claim AI yeah. art. Oh, I made it themselves. Like I hate them. I love AI art. There's an art in making AI art. Like what Ellie Alien said. It's not just like just bunch of jumbled around into a prompt and then, and then you get the art. It's mm. basically like there's an art to to the prompt itself. There's an art to the engine itself. And there's a lot of um, possibilities that you can build from AI art itself. Like there's this example that I found somewhere, like this guy making an AR, AI art frames, and he combined it into something like a stop motion kind of art. Oh. That is something, that, that is art. That's yeah, like that's something cool. that you well, can't you're right. do. Yeah, you're using well, the yeah, tools you're, to make I, something creative out of it, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. exactly. Something yeah. that, yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't have so much problem like, with oh, that. There's like effort put, put built in it. Mm -hmm. something that makes me like oh this is worth something it's not just something that you can just like put into the prompt and I'm like oh yeah i'll sell it for two eth <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're here? basically transferring prompts into ethereum at that point yeah right and without much extra effort um yeah. and you know the the thing that um you know i have been playing around with uh ai art recently i did get a license uh for uh the same one that uh Leilin used mm -hmm. um so i've been playing around with it and it does make some pretty amazing things, but um, you can you can even just keep giving it the same prompt mm -hmm. over and over again until it gives you what you want, basically. Okay. Like if oh. if if you if you fine tune a style in the AI, um, but the image itself isn't correct, mm -hmm. then you can just tweak a few things in your prompt here and there, and just keep feeding it the same prompt until it, you know, and just fine tuning it until it gives you what you want. Yeah, because it's um, kind of organic the way it builds it, right? It'll yeah, but in the way. end, is it, am I making art by doing that though? Yeah, I think I think it's more. That's uh, the there's question. A, there's a good video. That, I don't know if you guys watch him at all, but this guy on YouTube called Two Minute Papers, and he does a lot. He does a lot of like research on AI and all this stuff that's coming. He has a good video on on the the uh, Google's. Yeah, it's Google. They're they're Dolly too, and um, the same thing though. It's a good point. Like you you can you can throw in prompts, and he has a video talking about how creators. Can he actually put it up against some some like digital creators too? And uh, for the most part, the creators still won out. But the where a lot of people see that is is using it as a as a tool set. I think that's where it is right now, and that's kind of where it should stay. And then building creativity on top of that, not just going like you said straight from AI copy paste. Give me some ETH. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, there yeah. there are some other creators that that I've seen not some uh, not on. Uh, the marketplace but just in layer two in general mm -hmm. uh, that are making ai art that sells for you know a thousand dollars or more wow um and you know I, I i'm not privy to the to the actual details that that you know went into creating that mm -hmm. but me looking at it i can basically tell you 100 percent that it's made by ai yeah you can tell 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think people, some people can tell and some people can't. True. And that's, that's there are some things that it does really well, like architectural drawings, like anything with like fine lines and stuff like that. Like it really does a great job. Like any, even like a layman just coming to art, like they, it's, you know, when we've looked at art for so long, we develop an eye for it. But if you're a layman coming to it, you just kind of look at what you like. And a lot of AI art looks really cool. And I think that comes back to the, the same thing with stocks and everything else is you got to do research and understand what you're purchasing. Because some of these things are getting expensive. Like if you're going to drop a thousand dollars on this thing, take a minute to understand it and where it came from. Mm-hmm. I, I think us fighting against AI art is the same as steam fighting against NFTs. It's inevitable. It is happening. Mm -hmm. There's, there's no stopping it. Um, so it's going to have its place. And I, I've signed up for Dolly too, because I definitely want that for inspiration because I, I, I'm always thinking of like, Oh yeah, pirate with an octopus on his head. I'd love to be able to type that in and get like a whole bunch of images that I can look at and be like, Hey, that's a cool way to do it. Mm -hmm. And then from there I'll spin off and do it my way. I just think people that, it's it is straight great for up that. I've it. already yeah. developed some ideas that I didn't have before just by looking at the prompt results. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, I'll, Fat Smoker in chat made a good point too. Is is like, I mean, and we've all probably experienced it too. Where where like you can think of something, you just wish, oh, I wish I could just snap my fingers and that that was in existence. But the, it's such a huge process to create, and some people uh, don't have that ability or or are limited in in creating those things. Um, so like. Some people just have creative minds too. So mm-hmm. I, I mean, at, like you said, it's the beginning, and I think it's it will come. But it's just a matter of those AIs getting more and more advanced to be able to utilize people's creativity within their mind for those. I mean, even that yeah, people who maybe can't, maybe they don't have an arm even <laughs> or, or like anything, or just don't have the ability to do it. It opens up that world of creativity to to people who don't have that that sort of ability that, that a lot of us and you guys have too. So, I mean, I think, I think you're totally right on, on it's, it's silly to fight it, but talk about it and move forward with it in, in a, in a smart way in an understanding way that, that also sees the other side of it too. Cause there's beauty yeah. in our, in our minds too. Like yeah, I said, I'm definitely not opposed to it. I, I have a, a bought a license. I mean, that, like I paid the company that was, that's running this AI. So, you know, I'm, I'm definitely not opposed to it, but mm-hmm. uh, I'm just I'm concerned how we how we manage this yes. in the NFT space going forward, especially when, when when AI gets to the point where the uncanny valley is long, long behind us. Yeah, um, exactly. yeah I think people need to be honest and transparent with what they're doing, because um, that's that's the problem that that's the real problem. I mean, you can try to sell whatever you want, but if you're misleading people or. You know, they don't understand what you're doing, then that's where it throws a bad look on us all. I could see t- tools becoming available, and maybe this eventually in the long run is implemented in the, the GameStop marketplace and whatnot, where it, it, if you submit a photo and it's just a straight up AI photo, or even, I mean, you can utilize AI to analyze that photo to determine if that came from an AI company, because I'm, I'm sure like they would have history of all the, all the files that they created and, I'm sure I mean, at that way point, to and figure that out, right? At, at that point, they should probably just have an AI section on the marketplace. Yeah, yeah, and that's just allow true that. Uh, to I mean, we could just go one step back. Is when you create the AI art and you want to download it, just have the AI company make that an NFT that AI they transfer cool. to you. Oh, true, and then you can see the history of it. Yeah, yeah. that would. So be then cool. you know, yeah, be, yeah, good to be. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah. Um, if I could All right, you guys want to start a company? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. Facto, do you know how to make an AI? Can you help us out? Anyone in chat? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's code. It's easy. We're right? in. Just All right, Mizzling is in. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. All right, let's do it. Trade it though. Get it's your simple. script, o bros, together. I, you yeah. can't. You can't see me shaking my fist at you, Rum, but I'm shaking it right now. There's got to be things <laughs> that we can steal, right? <laughs> Maybe there's an AI that can write this for us. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm Wait, how do we exists. know you're not an AI, though? <laughs> yeah, I'll get, Are you I'll an get AI. That. You I'll look more like an AI through. than me. <laughs> air, air, I sound like an AI. AI. If an AI could create an AI, Was it the... it would be scary. Yeah, that's <laughs> when the world ends. That's when AI yeah, can create yeah. new AI. That's, that's, 
I don't that sounds like an AI would say. Well, isn't there like <laughs> websites that can create a website? Would you just giving it a few things? So wouldn't that be like an AI making an AI? Something? Well, yeah. The neat thing about AI is I think it will bring like fairness to to the world too. They're just giving. There's a lot of people who don't have a a desktop PC to be able to create things on and 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 do things. So it will definitely help with sort of bring more fairness to, to the world too and, and ai in general i think is going to be hugely positive for for everyone but obviously with any technology there's the bad actors too and they'll just have to get somebody should oh, absolutely. yeah somebody should make a two ai and have them target each other and prompt each other and just see what ends up <laughs> i think happening. that's happened before there's been chat bots like back and forth and it's pretty yeah. funny i've seen that <laughs> yeah it's the girl and the guy i think yep <laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay, well, I mean, other than that, is there anything else anyone wanted to add? If not, I'm just going to quickly go into a few promos and then do some giveaways, but any last words for just in terms of the Gems, space that we're Gems in? Driving. Oh, Jem's driving right now? Yeah, Jem yeah, is driving right now. Okay, be careful. <laughs> um, could, I, could I add something? Yeah, go ahead. AI? Yeah, um, similar, sim uh, like like Rama, I, I agree with what he said, and with many others, um, AI art is, uh, is is inevitable. Um, there's already many professionals in, in the industry that currently use AI to source concepts, um, and I, I do believe transparency is 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 important if you deal with AI art, simply because uh, there are a lot of laymen who can't really differentiate standard canvas work from, and that splash effect of art to uh, AI but um, I'm what the main thing that makes me curious about AI I'm not a program of sorts I'm not sort of text tech sort of guy but one thing that I'm very curious about is um, I believe that these people who program the AI are uh, they should they should also be transparent in the sense of where do they actually source these images for their AI because uh, you would have to have a many or serious combinations of different images across I don't know where they get it from, from the internet, or, or I'm not sure, but I'm curious to know if actually the source material that they use, if that's copyright free or not. Um, I'm because there's quite a surge in AI art, so yeah, I'm not too sure about that. I'm, would be quite my understanding is that most AIs uh, troll the internet and just look at everything that they can mm. find, yeah, and then yeah, appreciate um, all the keywords and metadata from those images uh, to use as tags for their prompts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good um, point. It's hard to sounds, kind of navigate yeah. that. You, you wouldn't really be able to tell after they've merged everything and added no. their fil filters or effects. But I mean, on an ethical point of view, I do think that um, I don't know. I I think eventually, at some point, I think these programmers or the people who code these uh, AI uh, generating art need to be transparent in the sense of where they source their images from. Because I would I'm not, not be sure at all surprised. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, because I'm not too sure if all the artists out there would depreciate their work being in pools and them making um, money off other other artists uh, obviously providing that content but I'm, I'm 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 for it i like ar i'm a big fan i, I sometimes have fun just to see what they can uh, come up with i mean it's very fascinating uh, but yeah that's just my view on it no exactly well there are there are ai programs that can completely uh, remake a board ape, ape Yacht club that doesn't exist and you you can't tell the difference. It's because it's been trained so well um, on the rest of the board apes that are out there that it can recreate them uh, flawlessly. Um, and you know, so eventually, you know, some of our work may be done like that. Uh, you know, possibly Meta Boys. I'm sure there's an AI out there that uh, is being trained to recreate Meta Boys. I already had one uh, try my uh, my collection uh, to do that. It was it was really funny to see. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. but you know what happens though when this becomes flawless to where they can replicate your stuff uh, that looks exactly like something that you would have made, but that doesn't that didn't exist before the AI made it. Like, what what happens then? Like, is that I feel like I mean, it's your style, it's your art basically because it was yeah. generated by looking at your collection images. Yeah, it's made um, out of your, your stuff. I feel so like, be, right, but but should that be your IP or no? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I feel like there's uh like enough information to you know to like prove that uh it was made out of your content and all that, then yeah, it should be your own IP and you have every right to like ask for it or like you know, ask for it to be taken down and stuff. 
Yeah, but I'm, well, my point is that it's going to get to a point where you're going to have to go and find a separate company to investigate whether or not that is true or not. Um, uh, just by looking at it, you won't be able to tell. No. Oh, okay. So what you mean? Oh. Well, I feel like sounds... that would be really difficult because, like, if you cannot mm-hmm. tell if it's your own style or something, then how would you go to a company and say, oh, I want you to investigate this image? They would have to investigate a bunch of images. It's definitely going to yeah, be tough it's, it, to navigate. Yeah, it's a real gray area. That, that's why I'm asking and bringing up the, the, yeah. the thought about it is because I am not sure how oh. that is going to play out. Yeah, I think we'll get there eventually, but yeah. Anyways, I think that's kind of all the time we have now. I'm going to go ahead real quick and give... Uh, I know, Abanti, you wanted to announce um, something. So we do have uh, Tea Time with Abanti coming up. Sorry, am, am I pronouncing that wrong again? Abante. It's, it's Abante. <laughs> Abante. Okay, yeah. You, If you want to just tell everyone about what's coming up here, I know you have a Twitter space coming. What's it all about? Yeah, so this Saturday, uh, the 23rd at 7 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central, uh, we're doing a live stream on Twitter, what we're calling Tea Time with Avante. And basically what we're going to be doing is, I'm, I'm sure everybody's curious, is what the hell are filmmakers doing with the Avante, <laughs> right? How does this work? What does this look like? So it gives everybody a chance to get to know us and mm-hmm. kind of where we came from and where we, what we hope to do, kind of wreck shop in this mm-hmm. industry new venture uh but most importantly what our projects are going to be what we're looking to launch uh our bigger bigger plans with that but most importantly is that we're gonna have a bonus surprise for our holders that held episode uh, part one Mm. part two of our pilot as well so i think it could be informative uh just listen with everybody right now there's a lot of crossover that i'm hearing just even i was i was holding back i was looking at it and i'm like talking about (laughs) augmented reality and this opens all into virtual reality I have so much to say about this as a director uh mm. and going in and stuff too so if you guys can make it you guys are kind of curious uh join us it'll be awesome um, nice so you'll be talking about kind of the tech behind all the filmmaking too and that and how you're yeah, utilizing it all. Be, and just a lot of people just aren't privileged you know uh, uh not privileged but are like probably to what the industry really is and what takes so much going into it and the hoops that you have to jump through i mean people definitely within uh, the music industry, I think, definitely have a good idea. But, yeah, because oh, that's definitely the thing since we've come to this space is the fact that people are like, well, is this like a Kickstarter campaign? What's going on? And it's like, well, you don't really, <laughs> yes. you don't really understand what it took to make a completed project of a pilot mm-hmm. episode. We're more than happy to get to, you know, for all of you to to learn and get to know us and mm-hmm. hear how we made this project and how we're going to keep going. Yeah. Well, the, no, it's it's cool, and it's nice to see like the how this marketplace really helped enable you guys to to flex your creative muscles. And I mean, this would be almost impossible to do without it. So it's neat to get see people get that chance to really create something awesome and and use all that tech that's now out there available to to individuals. Like it's it's really cool. Like you were saying earlier with the VR and 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 all that stuff that like the body tracking and and I've I've seen there's oh, yeah. a lot of things I watch on YouTube uh, just. F- the amount of like you can do so much now as an individual creator um even with like editing and 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 uh what's the what's the channel it was um corridor crew i watch them sometimes too and they they do a lot of cool stuff like in in unreal oh, engine and blender and then uh, corridor digital yeah Sorry. corridor digital yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, I know those guys. I worked with them. Oh, so, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, they show off a lot of really cool tools that individual creators can use, and that'll be cool. I'm looking forward to kind of seeing how you guys do your process, and I'm sure other people who, who have been supporting you are looking forward to that too. And, and ultimately, it's for that closeness with the fans, and that's what yeah. we want. Exactly. That's a big thing. Oh, right. Awesome. Did I hear you say that there would be rewards for those holding the first two episodes? Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah. There Very is going to be going to be a bonus surprise that we were super super excited to give the holders yeah are you announcing that on saturday Ooh. yeah so you got to tune in to find nice. out <laughs> sounds <laughs> like everybody needs to go buy those first two episodes <laughs> i know we're at <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. where can we get them game of Bonte and channel yes sweet beauty all right only on the gamestop marketplace right yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, exclusively. Uh, exclusively. Exclusively. Oh, okay. exclusively, yes. Now, before I get into just the giveaways we have, uh, is there anyone else that wanted to just add what they're working on or any announcements or, or teasers that they might have for anyone uh, interested? In? Uh, sure. But I heard someone. They can go first. <laughs> uh, it was just me. I'm I'm just... Uh, I sold out my first uh, first collection of Rich Dead Apes, which is just some ridiculous skulls with ridiculous things happening. Uh, and I've got the next hundred coming up in the next, uh, probably in the next week. So uh, I'm excited about it. But right now I've got a little promo one going that's, uh, I think it's pretty cheap. I don't know, Ethereum fluctuates so much, but yeah. uh, it's it's available on my uh, in my Rich Dead Apes collection. collection. Yeah, can't even talk. Uh, but that's really all I got going right now. I got some other stuff I'm working on. Uh, lots of photography. Uh, nice. A couple other, my Beat Freaks collection. Nice. Uh, but it's too hot to work in front of a computer right now, so I'm just kind of taking it easy. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. Yeah. Um, what you have today? Yeah, so, uh, well, there's a... Uh, I gave the announcement today that uh, Smiling Apes, that one that it's like Inspire by Bore Apes, but in mm. 3D and has more stuff up. It's going to be available in the marketplace on Open Mint. So I'll, some people have been waiting for that. And also uh, for the other collections that are coming out later uh, in the future. Uh, yeah, uh, like I said, I'm planning on uh, giving a lot of those profits to uh, one of them. Uh, it's going to be for cancer research, and the other one's going to be for like uh, helping animals in need. So, you know, if uh, people have any suggestions or places that they would like me to donate, I'll take them into consideration and start doing some research. Nice. That's that. That was that smiling apes thing was is really cool. Did you said that's coming soon? Like you. Uh, smiling apes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, not. I don't know when it's coming out. I don't know if yeah. it's soon or not. But uh, it's coming out when uh, GameStop is open mint. What's open mint? Um. I don't know if I can answer that. Oh, he means when it's not curated. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, that makes sense. We all know that's coming eventually. Um, I also wanted. Uh, yeah, to go ahead. Do, uh, uh, yeah, I uh, my my uh, my first batch of my uh, the whole series that I'm working on uh, dropped uh, the day after <laughs> launch. I had to re relist everything, so that was kind of a hassle. But it all sold, and I'm still working on the next batches of that series. So it's going to be a total of uh, about 7,410 pieces. Uh, the first 1,100 dropped now. And uh, I'm still working uh, on the next batches, which, which all will introduce new traits, new teams, new backgrounds. And besides that, I will also be working on a new uh, uh, giveaways and new stuff for current holders of both uh, the first PTTA and the uh, second uh, Power to the Apes collection. So that will uh, also be coming. Nice. Yeah, that's awesome that you guys are doing like the from the original people, original holders of, of your original yeah, yeah, collection, yeah, your collections yeah. too, doing drops and stuff. Is that easy to do? Is that is that something that you can, or like, can you see all the addresses currently holding and just copy paste? Yeah. Or is there tools yeah. to automatically drop things? I'm sure there are tools for that, but until now, I have to done uh, have to do uh, everything uh, one by one. But I do yeah. can look up uh, who holds holds what. Uh, and currently, um, I'm in my Discord. I give people uh, certain roles uh, to what uh, which collection they own, and uh, I regularly uh, with some of my moderators, uh, we do some giveaways. Uh, we do a lot of giveaways uh, to uh, people that hold those roles. So we have two uh, separate roles. We have the, the left-handed apes and the, the right-handed apes, and uh, different um, different uh, uh, giveaways go to those uh, roles. And if you have both, you have a chance of getting uh, both. Nice. Um, can you announce anything, or are we good to go? Give you guys. I'm good to go. Okay. I'm good to go. I just want to say thank you. No <laughs> problem. Really yeah. 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 I'll let you. You guys don't have to stick around for this giveaway stuff if you don't want. Um. I just want to give you guys a huge thanks. Thanks for giving me all your time. I know you guys are swamped with this release and everything that's happening. Um, but it's really cool to just be able to talk to to the creators and all you guys about this and, and sort of help educate other people. And like I've said many times before, I mean, you've even just inspired me recently. I've been pulling some pretty late nights getting this ready. And and, and everyone I've talked to in my Discord and in in, in in the gazebo and everything has definitely been really inspired just, just to create. And, and just inspiring others to create is just... I think such a cool thing. And so I just want to give a big thanks to all of you guys for, 
for doing what you do and, and keep it up. And I'm looking forward to see, seeing what you can do in the future. Thanks for having us, man. Thank you. Really, yeah, really sure. appreciate being here with you guys. We all very much appreciate you. Thank yeah, you. Thanks for having yeah. us. The appreciation goes around. Oh, yeah, it was so it much. Was really awesome. Personally, uh, yeah, filmmakers on this side for letting us jump in. And I just want to add really quick, brother, we we're talking about quarter digital. Uh, just yeah. how I worked with them is that if you remember the video game, the uh, divisions that came out, it kind of, uh, mm. they did a live action series. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Was, uh, they did. So Corridor Digital did a live action series commissioned by Ubisoft. I was one of the leads in their live action. It's oh, an episode cool. called Ash. If you want to go back to their channel, watch it. If you watch it, I did my, all my own stunts. Oh, and that's cool. Nice. Stuff that's and awesome. So, yeah, oh, it was fun to work with those guys. Those guys are great. That's also why I'm saying that. They're yeah, fun. they seem like pretty cool. Guys. I, for me, I'm very excited to have Danny do another one of those stunts for Into the Veil because that'd be cool. No? Yes? You no? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that would, yeah. <laughs> you should film each stunt individually and then mint them as an NFT collection. Oh, that, that would be cool. Oh, God. There We're, you go. Into the the live stream for Saturday night. <laughs> also, yeah, can you guys do like a whiskey time with a vanity? Oh, we could. I mean, you could do whatever beverage you want to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, bring your own beverage. Beer, beer thirty with Avante. Yeah, you can do beer thirty. It's just it's it's tea time. I ain't gonna tell you what kind of tea it is, but it's tea time. <laughs> you can tell it raise <laughs> raise a glass. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. To all the creators, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so much. So much. They're so amazing. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll let you guys run. Stick around if you want just to hang around <laughs> Later. the giveaway. But thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And hopefully we can talk more. And you're always welcome to Discord. I'll leave that channel open for you All guys right. if you want to pop in and out and chat with each other. And we'll we'll stay. Yeah, I, I would be more than happy to come back on if you did another one of these. At some oh hell yeah. yeah. As, would, as yeah. things progress and then we see like kind of what you guys are doing and and, and obviously as as the most mostly we all care about as the GameStop market progresses and it's nice to get that kind of inside scoop and inside look and understanding of that so we're all excited for the future of that and where it's going so yeah like I said as as things move forward we'll we'll be in touch and we'll definitely do more of these I like these kind of in big big discussions groups late night hangouts it's it's cool and it's interesting to the people who, who are interested in it oh yeah, I, I can tell time. you a Thank secret oh go uh, yeah I got a real hot tip on the GameStop market Good. What is it? I hold the RS. just left. <laughs> oh, just I, left. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I think his tip was I'm buy, just... hold, DRS. And the, I hope you guys are excited yeah. for the split tonight. Don't worry. Rom does that to me all the yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming you're all at least one right. DRS, right? We got to uh, do GameStop a bit. Very much more than that. I'm, well, I, good, kind of, good. <laughs> I'm a little ashamed of how much money I have. Oh, that's, that's in not all of us. GameStop right now. <laughs> I no. feel you. Is that is that kind of where I guess that one question would be any did you guys all get involved with it, like with this marketplace because of GameStop or is there anyone who who kind of came oh, into this not knowing yeah. about GameStop? Oh, 100% yeah, I did. I think yeah. everybody yeah. knows that. I yeah, think the only reason know. I was going to upload to Polygon and sell a little bit there is because GameStop wasn't out and there was no ETA. Mm. But as soon as I got approved, uh, Polygon was uh, was dropped like a hot potato. It's pretty wild how many people it brought together and, and, and what's become of, of the January 2021 era and, and how that's developed. And so many things. Like I talked to Dave Lauer on my other AMA and it's just like the the – the the things that have come out of this whole saga is just amazing to see really like no one could have ex- i had none of none of this on my bingo card for for the year for 2021 and 2022 and i'm sure none of you did but it's exciting to see all the changes coming like the all the changes in the markets that the dave's doing and and i mean all all the creativity and 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 uh things that gamestop and you guys are doing so pre- pretty crazy part like community and 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 saga to be a part of but i'm happy to be a part of it i'm sure you guys are too absolutely, absolutely. yeah yeah you know whole I, I think is positive so so it's amazing what kind of community came out of it mm-hmm. everybody everybody is super positive super energetic so i, I just love uh, being in this community and creating for these people and talking with everyone helping everybody out uh, it's awesome yeah. it's been amazing yeah and the community of creators 
is one of the best communities I've ever been a part of for sure. Oh, okay. So yeah. thank you. Guys. Yeah. Thank you everybody. Yeah. Everybody yeah. just yeah. to support yeah. each other yeah. as much as we can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah pretty much. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you, like during this time I've met people, um, uh, the people that are here and others that couldn't make it, they're honestly super awesome people. So mm. I, I wouldn't have met him if it wasn't for GameStop. So also thanks to GameStop for that. <laughs> exactly. All right. Thanks. Well, I will thanks, let you guys run. I'll stop holding <laughs> you thanks, and um, yeah, do some giveaways here. Thank you guys for for submitting stuff for the giveaway. We I appreciate that. It's that's really cool. You too. Like you said, it's all about giving. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. Yep. I just sent you some. Uh. It was like okay. a few minutes ago. Oh. Yeah. Everybody. Uh. Happen. Everybody yeah. who's watching. <laughs> good luck. Yes. Uh, there's luck. a cloth in there. Yeah, yeah. Good luck, everyone. Hey, uh, you. uh Lily, Thanks, how many did, Was it just one? Uh, I think it I just, was like four or five. Four? Okay, I just need to know because I'm going to drop four names. Okay, oh, wait, can, can, I, can, I, can I enter to win Lily and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Say hi. You might not like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Hey, uh, I know I didn't register any. I didn't register any giveaways, but uh, if you want to send me a name, I'll send somebody a, uh, a free NFT. Okay, sure, I'll add. So we'll do five extra draws then. And, and yeah, I think the name is Lillian. Okay. Yeah, send send me a name as well. I don't. Mind. Yeah, same, same. Me too. Me too. Me too please. Sorry, did uh, did Rum sign us up? I I'm not sure. He did. <laughs> he oh, did. Uh, okay. Also, hey. I don't know if I can say anything else, but uh, if your community wants to enter to tomorrow, uh, I'll be doing uh, well, I haven't announced it on Twitter, but I guess they can hear it here first. Uh, I'll be doing a Smiley Nape uh, giveaway Ooh. tomorrow. And nice. uh, I've never done one of those. I was always like, I'm not going to do a giveaway, but I think it's, uh, I think I should. Yeah, so if those your are, those community wants awesome. to. I know yeah, the floor can... price on those is pretty insane right now. Are you yeah, going to be announcing price... that on Twitter? Giving one away is pretty huge. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, so the uh, yeah, I I don't know if you if I can mention the fourth place or not. It's like I don't know That's if you fine. want me to do that, but no, no, no. Um, no. are you announcing that that on Twitter? Like, where can people get the details for? Ah, uh, yeah, so they tell some more, but uh, you guys can just like you know just be in the lookout for it tomorrow, I guess. Okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so you guys can have that. Yeah, if I if I see it too, I'll, I'll let everyone know. I'll, I'll be okay. on the lookout. So. All right. If there's nothing else, I'm gonna add. So that was four from you, and then another three from from the rest of you guys. So I'll add in another seven names to draw. So we got we got a lot. We got ten from Gem, and then uh, one from Ordinary Adam, Bumbleberry, and Power to the Apes as well. So I'm gonna get ahead and me. start doing this. Sorry. I said also from oh, me. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. We got one from you too. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Okay. I'm gonna. Okay, I got I got to figure out the quantity here. I think I think I got it. Right. Everyone gets an NFT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An hey, NFT. If, if, uh, if, if I draw too many, we'll all make sure to to do something. I'll, hey, hey how about this? Man. If I draw too many, you get a GameStop gift card. Okay. Fifty dollars GameStop gift card. If, if I go overboard. Damn. So I'll just draw, 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 draw. I'll take a smiling ape instead. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> all right okay i'm gonna get to this i'm gonna let you guys run and uh, uh once again thank you so much and we'll do this again thank you right. man no thank problem. you thank you, thank you, you everyone it was you a pleasure being here see you later yeah guys. pleasure man thank you bye all right thank you